Greetings. Hi, I'm Stan Houston for What It Takes, and I'd just like to take a, a few minutes to put together some thoughts and perhaps some challenges that might be helpful and useful to you. One of the things that we have sought to do for some time now is to take the things that I have loved. Uh, I was an international broadcaster for many, many years, and now I get to be one again. Without all of that transmitters and all of those studios and all that power, I am fortunate enough because of the, even though the world's in kind of a mess, the technology has now made it possible for us to literally come to you all over the world. I have students and friends and listeners and viewers in over 150 countries. How about that? And uh, many of you are there because together, together, we're seeking to discover what it takes so we can really flourish in our careers, so we can build our business and make it uh, profitable and practical and, as I say, high a high impact, have great influence, and uh, the income. And I mean by income, not just money, but all of the incoming things, the good things that can come to us. We want to make that happen. At the same time, be fully alive. You know, and uh, you think that term through, fully alive. What does that mean to you? I'm adjusting my new glasses, as you may see. I've gotten new glasses. Uh, my uh, wife said, you need new glasses, and you need modern glasses, and since she's the one who struggles to keep me somewhat up to date, uh, she's very up to date, but she struggles to help me do that. Uh, got new glasses, and uh, hopefully less reflective. I'm also going to get contacts. I've got a contact, and then I can perhaps speak without glasses and worry about some of the glasses and things like that, you know. You know. Uh, so I'll be new contacts, which I've never had in my life, and uh, then getting used to my new glasses, so I can, cer I can certainly see better. And then, because I could see better, I was looking through a magazine the other day. It was Fortune magazine, and it had the list of uh, uh, some of the top paid people in the world. And there was a picture, I won't use his name, you probably know, uh, who was the top paid actor uh, last year. Made over $60 million as an actor. And it turns out he's got the very same haircut that I have. Just exactly. Um, and I went and showed it to my wife, and she said, and he also has a little stubble beard. And I said, yeah. He said, she said, well, that's kind of in, you know. And I said, well, it's kind of, he said, no. She said, you had a beard when we were very young, and I really liked it. And I said, well, I haven't had a beard for years, and it's certainly not uh, that kind of dark color anymore. And she said, probably not. But why don't you give it a try? So uh, I'm about a week, uh, nine days into a little bit of a, you know, that fashion beard, I've been told. And uh, we'll find out whether I like it, or whether I can stand it, or whether I really want to do it on the video. And perhaps you can express an opinion to me about uh, my stubble beard and see where that goes. What I'm hoping to do in just this brief time is to uh, simply encourage you, and I hope you will join me on uh, What It Takes Radio, uh, how that will work, uh, Monday through Thursday, a little four to five minute meditation, and then every Friday, significant stuff, good stuff. Uh, we have guests, we have skills and stories and strategies, and I'm pretty sure that you will find it entertaining as well as educational, educational, and uh, hopefully useful, and uh, perhaps a touch of wisdom, insight, and truth will come your way. Part of that has led me to exactly where I'm at in uh, celebrating, as I oftentimes do, with uh, my friends in the Jewish or Hebrew tradition who really view this time of the year as the real new year. This is the time of the year. Uh, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, which is not only the start of a new year, it is a, a fresh start and a fresh and new and powerful look ahead at what might come 
in the year before us. And so I, I celebrate that. And so I try and go through a little bit of a self-audit. And what I'd like to do is just ask you to think about some of these things. And uh, hopefully that will be helpful to you. And then in another program, I've got a whole list of classes and courses I think will be useful to you. But we'll talk about that some other time. One of my friends said to me the other day, she, he said, Stan, doesn't it just kind of seem that nothing is working anymore? It seems like everything is broken. Our politics is broken. The world leadership is broken. The economy still broke. Uh, it's a really broken world. Boy. And I said, well, it's always been somewhat broken. He said, I know that, but doesn't it seem that it's a little more serious or intense right now? And uh, I, I can see that. So I'm, I'm going to ask you, first of all, to look at your own life and your own business right now, and let's just ask the B question. What is broken? Uh, what is broken in your life and your business that perhaps need some fixing, perhaps need some healing. What is broken that you'd like to not be broken? The second question is, and I've used this for many years, um, what is missing in your life, in your business? What would you like to have that's not there? We're not necessarily talking about something that's badly broken, but it's a piece of your life, an understanding or a position or something that would help you be far more effective and, and more successful, but it's missing right now. What is missing that you'd like to put in its place and in the space of your life and business in the next year? What's missing? Then I'd like to ask you this, what would you like to be better at? in the months and weeks and maybe a year before you. What would you like to be better at? And maybe if you're better at it, you'll get better results. What would you like to be better at? One of my mentors has reminded me strongly, he said, the only way you will really grow, Stan, is two characters. Uh, they both start with H. Hustad can be humble and honest. Humility and honesty, those two qualities are vital. And without them, you don't change, you don't grow, you stay stuck. Now, wow, as I used to say on the radio late night and still do on occasion, let that kind of sit on your head for a while. Humility and honesty. But then I'm going to ask a fourth question. Those were kind of maybe negative, problematic. <clears throat> How have you been blessed? There's an old gospel song that used to go, count your many, it was kind of corny, count your many blessings, name them one by one. Um, hey, you have been blessed, no matter what, and so have I. Every breath we take, there's another B word, is a, a blessing. What is it that you can right now, in the midst of the adversities that you have, as well as the opportunities that are before you, in the midst of some really deep difficulties, maybe even life-shattering or life-threatening difficulties, what can you say, this has been a blessing, this is a way I have been blessed? You see, fear oftentimes come in, comes into our life when we, uh, we lack gratitude, thankfulness, and we're full of fear. And so if we can deal with those issues, oftentimes life has a very, very new look and a new opportunity face for it. So I simply ask you to be the honest one uh, and say, you know, What's broken that needs healing and being fixed? What uh, is missing that perhaps I should look to put in place and space? Um, yeah, what do I need to do that's better? How can I become better? But most importantly, how have I been blessed? Hey, just some thoughts. Listen to my radio shows. 
I would be grateful. Uh, lots of good classes and courses coming up really within the next month, and I'll share them with you. But right now, I would be grateful if you just take some of my comments seriously and uh, speak back to me, respond. How you can now do with this understanding a little bit more about what it takes. Peace to you. Best and blessings, and bye for now.